Hello, and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and I am your host for this program. Today, I am excited to have Gina Sequenia, our guest on the show, to talk about business and community. Gina, welcome to the show. Hello. And thanks for being on here. I appreciate you so much. Tell our viewers about yourself. Oh. I um, name is Gino Sopoina. I am the uh, executive director at the Hawaii Building and Construction Trades Council. Uh, it's an uh, it's, uh, organization that uh, represents 18 construction trade unions throughout the state of Hawaii. Advocate the construction industry, um, the interest, the best interest of the affiliates. Uh, 18 uh, construction trade unions would make, which makes up affiliates of building trades. Um, born and raised in Hawaii. Got a foundation. I'm involved in all kinds of different pro, uh, community programs. So, boards and yeah, you ask away and how <laughs> about you know. Now, when you talk about so many organizations, you know, I feel like every time we catch up, You've joined another organization or another board, and I, I, I commend you so much on that. I believe that takes up a lot of time. Let's start with um, HBCTC. How did you get into the organization and, and now being the executive director of it? How did everything lead up to that? Okay, um, maybe I'll give you a little more history. Uh, I used to be the executive uh sorry, the district representative, which is the head of the operators union, the operating engineers, local tree union here, in Hawaii. So basically the heavy equipment operators, all those cranes, bulldozers, uh, excavators and stuff like that, that you see on these construction uh, projects. I was the head of that union from 2008, 2012. I left, uh, Went went out in the field and worked a couple of years for a company called Franklin Jill Construction. Then uh, 2014, the the head of the laborers union, uh, uh, laborers union, which is the the guys that are construction labor, you know, guys that's in the trenches and you know, all doing the heavy uh, labor work like shoveling and that, uh, laying the pipe and stuff like that. Um, they hired me to be the governor and relations director. Oh, uh, was my actual title there was government community relations director. Uh, I, I worked for that for that organization for a couple of years and was able to get out me about a lot of good relationships with like politicians, legislators. Uh, being a labor leader myself for four years prior, oh. Uh, 2019, uh, my name got dropped in the hat for this executive director position and everything just aligned with my relationships with the unions, the, the different unions and labor leaders, uh, politicians and stuff like legislators and some of the contractors made it a perfect fit. That's awesome. Um, what are some of the what are the, some of the highlights of your position so far? How, like, what do you think are the best parts of it, especially when it comes to helping people out? I'm, you know, our, my position, I pretty much advocate for the construction industry, but not only the construction industry, but more so my affiliates make up uh, Hawaii Beauty Construction Crates. As I mentioned before, about 18 of them. Um, the electricians, the plumbers, painters, iron workers, masons, I mean, you name it, teamsters, every construction trade union out there with the exception of the carpenters, I represent. Um, so when I advocate for projects, developers, they call me and they, they, they have this job that they want to push through. And it has to go through a process, like maybe people with board, city council, 
land use commission, stuff like that. Um, HCDA, there are different uh, steps that they have to, that they have to uh, go through to get the job passed. So things that we that I do now are going to probably come into fruition years from now. So, um, for example, I was, I was a big uh, supporter of rail back in 2007. And, you know, luckily it just came full circle. I mean, I was able to ride the rail uh, last week. Uh, it was about, it was the other week, two weeks ago. Uh, we, we jumped on the rail for the first time and uh, ahead of the grand opening. And, and I was there at the grand opening also. Um, so things like that, the things that I now probably benefit people probably years, maybe like four, four plus, you know, years from now, these jobs do get going and start to break ground and, and, and start being built. That that's wonderful. I, and, and going back to what I had mentioned earlier, your involvement with community and tying it with what you do is very crucial but i i want you to talk more about that why is it important to be involved in the community to help out with whatever it is you do for a living well you know i think a lot of our what we do is part of the community affects the community i mean we talk about rail or projects infrastructure improvements uh housing you know all of these things that um, we we support, and we we we, uh, we advocate for, will affect the community. Um, so it's good to have a positive image out there. You know, when I came on, we, we did some rebranding. You know, maybe sometimes some of the unions get a bad rap. Um, kind of like you know, they think we're uh, stuff like that, and just it's like pull their way around. Nothing like that. Oh, you know, we we stand together. We get more accomplished, and fortunately, we've, we've been able all those things that we've been able to do uh, get to us where we're at today. It's a testament the hard work that everybody put in the past. So, uh, I just want to keep, keep continue to do that and continue to give back to the community. community um, our members, so our affiliates, affiliate has members. For example, the uh, painters union or the plumbers union. Their members are, let's say, they have a, uh, just for example, the electricians union might have 2,000 members. So that's 2,000 people living out there in the communities that are members of the electricians union, but the electricians union is part of the beauty trade. So collectively, our, if we put all the affiliates together and counted their members, their membership, we come out to over 30,000 plus members. And that makes up a good chunk of the community or the population of Hawaii. So, and, and their families, right? So, in, yeah, their families in there also. Yeah, I I was having a conversation with an individual earlier this week about unions, and I would love to learn from you what unions do for uh, like its members and, and employees. Like, what is because I feel like you can speak to this the best. What is the value of unions when it comes to employees and employment? Unions. Uh... You fight for you worker workers' rights. Uh, fight for better wages, better benefits. Um, a lot of people when they uh, work the workforce, a lot of them will want to become part of a union because they know the unions get the best wages, right? They get the highest highest paid in their craft, in their trade. Um, they have the best medical. I mean, their benef their medical programs are one out of second to none. Their hiring plans, education plans. Um, there's a lot of uh, 
I guess, fringe benefits that benefit workers extremely besides having to have the protection of a union in case they get wrongfully terminated. I mean, if you're in the private sector and you're not part of a union, or can just terminate you, terminate you, uh, that's it. Where if you were part of a union, would have to have reason just cause somebody or else you need to turn on and file a grievance um, and, and kind of fight for your job back and all. Um, so it, it, all of those things, there's a lot of things in history that, you know, mean uh, medical coverage, vacation pay, holidays off, it's all because of unions and what unions done has done pass. So unions is very, very important. Um, labor makes up a big part of the workforce. Um, and uh, yeah, and construction in Hawaii, construction, and we, we saw it in, I have to jump around, but you know what I mean? During COVID, when uh, tourism was down, you know, uh, construction kept kept everybody working, uh, at least uh, our members working, and could have been even worse. So, kept poised economy points. Yeah, and thank you for that. Uh, I want to segue now into your community involvement because I think you're the best person to talk about this. So I. So I met you because I wrote a story about you since you came up, founded the Mariano Sequenia Foundation. Tell us a bit more about that. Okay. Well, um, long story short, my, uh, I started the foundation. My dad, uh, my dad, uh, is from the Philippines. He, uh, grew up, uh, on his golf course. In the Philippines, real poor, uh, self taught, and he became good at golf, he became a caddy. And he was a caddy for this one English guy. And this English guy uh, was a big wig for the stevedores. So one day, my dad must have up enough courage to ask this guy, this English guy, to help get him out of the Philippines so he could, um, you know have better opportunities abroad. And a guy at 17 years old, you know, he tell me the stories how he lied on his application because he was even 18 years old. He, uh, he uh, kissed his brothers and sisters goodbye in the middle of the night and left. And, you know, basically never to return till years, years, years later. So he was able to get a Guam and he was working off for two to three years. He was able to send money back, money he was worth, money he was making being abroad, better, uh, better opportunities. And, uh, he was able to join the U S army. And then I said, the rest is history. Cause after that, got out of the army, lived here and was stationed here last, uh, he lived here. And went back to the Philippines, married my mom. I was fortunate enough to be born here in the United States. Uh, my dad always, he went back to the Philippines, he'd always want to give back. Give back to the the community that he was working for, uh, uh, that he uh, left, that he grew up in, uh, that golf course that he uh, learned golf from. But he, he passed away in 2012 and it never took the beat when he started. So I, I, when he was in hospice, I made him a promise that I, I finished what he started. So uh, fast forward, maybe about 2016, I went to the Philippines, a, a trip with my mom, then a funeral, my uh, auntie, and I went and kept that promise. I went to the golf course, bought a cousin of mine, told her what my uh, plan was. She talked to some people and then introduced me to board members of the golf course. 
which turned around and said, hey, let's start a junior golf scholarship program in your dad's name. That's how it started. Yeah. So went back a couple months later, interviewed 30 kids, partnered with the city county of Santa Barbara, which is a town that he grew up in. It's called New Gilo. And well, uh, I sponsored 10 kids and the city of Santa Barbara's 10 kids. So what we did was we paid uh, 1,000 pesos, which is about $20 US, and just uh, each kid. So I was basically $200 in my pocket every month. Uh, that happened for about four years, and I said, well, this has to become uh, self-sustaining. I can't keep on putting money out of my own pocket. For all my relationships that I have and business community and all the all the people that I know, I mean, he would be able to donate to, uh, if I had a 501c3 uh, nonprofit. So I started, I started a nonprofit organization called it the Mariano Sequena. Sequena, I, I, I grew up seeing Sequena, but the correct way is Sukenya. It's like, oh, is it Sukenya? Okay. I know the Enya. He is K. Hi. Yeah, and then the Enya, right? Enya. So, um, so I'm trying to say it that way nowadays. But uh, I when I started that that foundation, and I started uh, putting in more programs into it. Um, I also started helping kids here in Hawaii because I didn't want to, um, no, um, so a fundraiser here. In Hawaii, and ask businesses to support my foundation, and I sell, I ship every penny off to a different country, right? So, uh, I I help kids here here uh, through my, uh, my dad's foundation. Also, I I, I pick one boy and one girl. Some of them belong to a golf program, twenty five thousand uh, twenty five hundred dollars scholarship. Last year we had um, Baldwin High School from Maui. She won, and then a boy from the whole so that scholarship. I we still have the ten kids, or now it's twenty kids, uh, in Santa Barbara. I have another foundation, another program under the foundation. It's my mom went to a, un, a university there in Philippines, so any when well, we select one student a year, pay full ride tuition um, for a year. First, uh, first uh, dollar was a nurse, and uh, she's in her second year now. And then last year, we selected other scholars, so he's selecting our third one this coming school year. So, keep forward to that. Uh, there's an orphanage there that my mom grew up at in, an island called Gimaras, and so we, we helped that orphanage out. And them, they have supply and stuff like that, financial help. And the last is a program here in Hawaii called the Kalani Mohoi Memorial Scholarship. Kalani Mohoi was the guy who hired me, operating engineers. He was the he was a labor leader. Well, and he hired me as a business agent. And when he got promoted an officer in the mainland, and that's when I became the head of Hawaii, operating engineers in Hawaii. And if it wasn't for him, I don't think uh, I'd be having all these great relationships with all the people that I have really relationships with. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now, was it? So I wanted to, uh, I'm sorry, he passed away. Uh, fortunately, he passed away early, just before he turned 55. Expected me, um, so I asked the family if I honor him by starting a program and putting that under my phone. Those four, four uh, programs are under my phone. With everything that you're doing, being the, I know that's a little hot, being the executive director of HBCTC, um, 
founding an organization and running your annual, you know, golf tournament, as well as doing fundraisers um, and the 50 other boards that you're on. <laughs> How- I'm working for uh, Alzheimer's Association. Yeah. Uh, thank you. How do you balance all that? How do you find the time? You know, this is what I say. It's funny, I'm a, I'm also a Freemason. Uh, and uh, before I became a Freemason, uh, I, I told myself, geez, I don't know if I have enough time to dedicate to becoming a Freemason. Oh, uh, but uh, when I went through it and I became a free mason, a master mason, I loved it so much that uh, so all I do now is I, I make the time. I, I get involved. I'm part of the Shriners, which also I'm going to be probably on the board of here soon, trying to be on the board of the Shriners Hospital. Um. So besides being the Alzheimer's Association of Hawaii, uh, Blood Bank of Hawaii, and uh, soon to be uh, Shriners Hospital of Hawaii. Uh, and that's the Filipino Chamber. The Filipino Chamber. And that's the Filipino Chamber, yeah. And uh, now it's just, yeah, my I'm a good buddy of mine, you know, you know uh, Jerome, Jake, Jake Ardana, Jerome Ardana, you know Jerome? So Jerome, uh, he says, hey, Jenny Minnat, director, and uh, lo and behold, I, I was told I had one of, the, one of the most votes on the board of directors. I was like, oh, yeah, it's so, uh, uh, but you know, for me, it was, it's, it's an honor because uh, I really wanted to get, uh, get involved in the Filipino community, and I wasn't born in the Philippines, but born and raised here. I kind of, you know, had the history of the, my family in, Hawaii, in the Philippines, uh, and, and just being proud to be Filipino. Just, it, it just comes from circle. Um, what would, for people who are watching or listening to this, um, what would you like to tell them in regards to combining both what you do for a living and community involvement? What is one message or one lesson that you would like to share? Uh, well, for somebody who wants to be Gina. <laughs> Someone wants to be Gina. Yeah. yeah. Relationship. That's my the one word I'm going to I value my relationships. I have great relationships with a lot of people. You got to have integrity. When you when you say something, you're gonna do something. You live. You do the right thing, even though when nobody's looking, right? And as having integrity, all of that kind of stuff, uh, you know, then all that you meet, I say three things, right? You uh, establish the relationship, you build on the relationship, and the last is you strength. I would see that. Place that when I know me knows that lesson so well. Um, then you have re- re- relationships, you know, ensures that I have a seat at the table, uh, part of the discussion and the decision making. Just open a lot of doors. You know, I get asked to be boards and I, I honor to accept to be on it. And yeah. That's the secret relationships. And that's how you're on 50 boards. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. With a few minutes that we have left, is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, no, I mean, you know, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity. Thank you for uh, the relationship that I have with you. <laughs> I think you guys are going to be, you're going to be, uh, training me on the uh, cover of still. No career again because uh, I was the executive of the year of Schilt, Filipino Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's coming October and getting uh, 
My foundation is being uh, recognized again for his big uh, Bionion Gala. Phil Palm Center is putting on that. I'm blessed. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, thank you, Gina. So Kenya, so Kenya, see, I'm I'm going along with what you're saying too. Thank you, Gino, for being on the show today. I appreciate you and my friendship with you as well. So thank you for that. Thank you. And thank you to the Think Tech Hawaii as well for making shows like this possible. Today we had Haley and Michael helping us out. And thanks to Jay Fido. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.